Notion has just released a major update for databases and their underlying architecture, which introduces data sources as a new organizational layer. In this video, we are going to check out what these new changes look like and what new ways of working with databases they enable. The update impacts the way databases can be set up in your workspace as well as the API. What makes this a critical update for all tools and integration using the Notion API. If you are using any third-party tools or integrations that access your workspace and databases via the API, make sure to watch this video all the way to the end because you might break some of your workflows if you're not careful while these changes and updates are ongoing. But now let's jump right into it. All right, before we jump into my Notion workspace, let's take a quick look at the developer documentation page from Notion for this update, which has this nice image, which quickly explains what has happened. So in here, you can see that databases now at the top can contain data sources underneath, and these data sources then contain the pages. Before that, it was the database directly which contained the page. So now we have added one new organizational layer to the hierarchy of how databases are basically designed within Notion. And now let's take a look what that looks like in our Notion workspace. For this, I have prepared a few things that we're going through in this video, and we start with the example database up here. Before this update, and as you probably know, one database contained exactly one set of different properties. So if we're looking here at this empty database, I was able to add a text property to it and a select property. And in the database settings menu, when looking at the different properties, I would always see all the properties for this specific database. What this update changes is that we are now able to add different sets of properties to the same database. And now I'm going to show you how to do that. Within the database settings menu, you will now find this new menu point, manage data sources at the bottom of this menu. And when you click on it, you can now see that this database right now contains only one data source, which is the one that we have just added a text and a select property to. In this menu, I can now click on add data source. Then I click on new empty data source. And now you can see that a new table view has been added, but this table view doesn't contain the properties that we have just added to the previous one. Also, the title has changed to now read example database and new data source. I'm going to change that back to example database. And I'm also going to get back my database icon. And you can also see that this new data source label has appeared, which now is empty, but I'm just going to call it new data source. And now again, I'm going to add a few properties to this data source. This time, I'm going to choose the number property and I'm also going to add a created date property to it. And now let's take a closer look at the property settings by going into the database settings menu and I click on property visibility. Where now you can see the only properties that I see here is my number and my created date property, but not the text and the select property from the other data source. When I open this one by clicking here, you will see that for the other data source, we have different properties, which means that these data sources and their properties are not connected with each other, but they are part of the same database. In this view, you can also see now that the data source title has changed, indicating that we are now operating in another data source. And just like for databases and pages, I can also change the title to whatever I want let's say old data source here. And just like for databases and pages as well, you can add and change the icon for each data source. You also have the option to hide the data source titles to get rid of them altogether. And aside from adding a new data source within the database settings menu, which I showed you before, you can also just simply click on the add new view button up here, which will now feature a new data source option as well. Now I have prepared two different databases with multiple different data sources each to show you the different things you can do with these data sources. On the left, you can see database one with the data sources A, B, and C, which have one view each. And on the right, we have database two with the data sources D, E, and F, which also have one view each. A new thing for databases, which has not been possible before, is that you can add a view that shows you data from a separate database and data source within the database views. And for this, I can either click on the plus symbol here and click on data source here. And then instead of creating a new one, I can link to an existing database. And here I'm going to select the data source D from database number two. 
And here you can just simply choose the table view that already exists. And now you can see that we have the same data on the left and on the right, even though the data source for this is actually in database number two. This works exactly the same as the link database view feature, which you might know from adding different link views to your pages. But now you can also do it within a database directly. You will also be able to see this new link data source by going into the Manage Data Sources menu. So this database now contains the data sources A, B, and C and has a linked view of data source D. What you can also do with data sources now is move them from one database to another. So in this case, I'm going to open the database menu for database number two. I open the Manage Data Sources menu. And for data source D, which we have linked before, I'm now clicking on Move To. Then I'm finding the database one from our example on the left. I click on it and now I can select whether I want to move the data source and the view or just the data source. So in this case, I'm going to click on data source and view. And you can now see on the left that the data source D, which was previously linked, is now part of the actual database one and has been moved over from database number two. In the view menu of database number one, you can see now that we have two table views for data source D, the one which we previously created by linking the data source, and also now the one that has been moved over from database number two. And now let's see what happens when we delete all views for this data source. So the top ones, just to show you, are A, B, and C. So we're going to delete both ones for data source number D. Delete. And this will give you the menu where you can choose, I want to only delete the view or delete the last view and the data source. And in this case, I'm going to select delete view only. I click on delete view. And when we now open up the manage data sources menu, you can now see that we have a data source in our database that actually doesn't have a single view. So the data is there, the properties are there, but there's no view actually to look at the data right now. This practically hides the data source within this database. Before these changes, you basically had two different options to combine multiple different views with multiple different sets of properties into one page. The first and often very clunky solution was to create one master database with many different properties and filtered views to account for different use cases within one single database. The second and probably much more common solution was to create multiple databases separate from each other and then bringing the different views from them together by creating a page with multiple linked views from these different databases. Both these options are still viable with this update. But there's one more option available now, which we are going to look at in a simple example. All right, to showcase this new option, I have prepared this very simple example use case with an imaginary CRM solution, which is containing contacts, projects, tasks, and also it has to include input from a completely separate meeting notes database. On the left, you can see a way to create a solution which is maybe familiar for you, which is creating separate databases. So we have our contacts, our projects, and our task databases separate, and also our meeting notes database separate. But to bring it all together, we were able to create a CRM page. And within this CRM page, I was able to create linked database views where we can see the contacts, the projects, the tasks, and also the meeting notes from these different databases all in one page. What's now possible with the new introduction of these data sources is that you can create the same thing with much less clutter, so to say, in your workspace. Because on the right hand side, everything we need is just one database. And when I open this one, you will see that we still have our contacts, which is one data source. We have our projects, which is one data source. And we have our task, which is one data source. And I'm also able to add the meeting notes as a linked view from the other database, which was separate. So basically, I'm able to achieve the same outcome with just one database in here, rather than a page and three separate databases, which I then have to handle somewhere in my workspace. So the main benefit of this is practically that we have less clutter in our workspace if we want to, because we can contain multiple different sets of properties, AKA data sources within the same database. And we can also add link views directly to a database.
While this provides a new option to create more compact database setups, it also comes with some limitations and bottlenecks, which we are going to take a look at now. The first limitation, which some people have been speculating about on Reddit, is that you are not able to show different properties from different data sources, like here, in the same view. So now I'm here in data source A, and for the property visibility, I can only select data source A text to be visible. And you can see, as before, for data sources B, we have the B text and C, we have the C text. But you cannot show them in the same view because data sources are still separate from each other and can only be connected via a relation property, just like we were used to connect two separate databases via relations. Another limitation is that you cannot open a specific data source. You always have to access all data sources via the main database view and the views that you create in here. And I think this can be a problem if you have multiple data sources with multiple different views, then things can get pretty messy in this database view because imagine you have maybe three different data sources, each with 10 views, which is not uncommon when you use charts and stuff. And then the only way to look at it within the database would be in this database one view where all the views would be visible here. You cannot hide them. You can just delete them or create them from scratch. So I think for setups that require many views across multiple different data sources, things can get a little bit messy very fast. And I think for these cases, I would still make sure to separate on a database level and not just a data source level. What I also noticed is that there's currently no way to simply duplicate a specific data source. When you click on the three dot menu in here, the option simply doesn't exist. You can only duplicate the entire databases and all of its data sources at once by using the duplication function, which we had before as well. And the last thing that I want to touch on here is the current non-existing support for wikis which unlike databases do not support multiple data sources as part of this month's launch of this update. And for this reason, Notion even recommends specifically to use alternative ways to structure your knowledge in Notion. So if you are working with wikis in your workspace, this is something to keep in mind for now, but it sounds like support for multiple data sources will also come to wikis. These are the main benefits and limitations that I came across during my tests today. But there's probably more things to figure out as more people start using these new features. As I mentioned earlier, this update comes with some significant changes to Notion's API, which means all tools and integrations using the API will have to update their processes to adjust to these new changes. All existing workflows will continue to work for all databases that only contain one single data source. But as soon as a second data source is added, things might break. And moving forward, all tools and integrations will have to specify a data source ID rather than just a database ID whenever interacting with a database. If you are using any tools or integrations that access your Notion workspace, make sure to not add any new data sources to existing databases that rely on these tools until you're certain that they've updated to the new API version and until you had time to review your workflows. As you can see, this is primarily an update to the organizational hierarchy of databases within Notion which might enable new use cases and features down the road. Some people on Reddit and X have been speculating that this update might be related to an upcoming update to get more granular control over database permissions. But with Notion's make event just around the corner, we might have some related news to this update very soon. For now, let's see how things develop over time. And until then, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Notion-related content and updates. And make sure to leave a comment below this video with your opinion on these new changes. Lastly, feel free to sign up to my newsletter to stay up to date about my videos and content and to get access to exclusive launch discounts for my upcoming templates.